In this video, I'm going to show you how to make cheap 3D printable LED lights that can even be integrated with Alexa. Hi, my name is Martin and I do side projects. For the past couple of months, I've been kind of obsessed with app-controlled LED lights like the Philips Hue series or the Gobi system. But after checking their prices online and in store, I quickly realized they are way out of my budget. Luckily, I have a 3D printer and a few good ideas. So in this video, I'll show you how I built my own smart LED lights and I'm gonna teach you how you can do it yourself too. I decided to use the ESP32 microcontroller to drive the lights. It's easy to work with, has built-in Wi-Fi and the form factor is small enough to conceal it inside the design. Another big adventure is that there is already specialized software available for it, but more on that later. I want to put together a prototype board with the controller as well as some cable terminals and I will power the lights with a cheap 5 volt power supply I got off of Amazon. For your own build, make sure the power supply is strong enough to power all LEDs you are planning to use. One LED draws around 55 milliamps of power, so with this 10 amp power supply I can drive roughly 180 LEDs. To start, I took some measurements of the board and wrote them down. Looking back, I probably could have just looked at the datasheet to get that info and that's what I'd recommend you do. From there, I started experimenting with different design ideas, going through a few iterations until I landed on something I really liked. My idea was to make an oval, ring-shaped lamp with a hollow center sitting on a base that would house all the electronics. I thought this design would be both aesthetically pleasing and fairly easy to construct later on. I wanted the front to be completely flush with no edges or parts sticking out. Inside the ring I plan to place an LED light strip with individually addressable RGB LEDs. Finally, the lamp would be sealed off with a thin light diffuser, 3D printed from a single layer of white PLA. For my CAD work, I use Fusion 360. It's a commercial software, but there's also a free version with all the functionality you'll ever need. I started by designing the ring shape, extruding it and then building up the walls. Next I added a recessed ridge to hold the diffuser and a hole for the power and data lines that connect to the LED strip. After that I designed the diffuser itself so it would fit perfectly into the ring. Then I moved on to the base. I designed a box for the electronics and used the light ring to cut out a section so the two parts would fit together seamlessly. This way I could print all the parts separately and glue them together later, which not only makes for easier printing but also gives a cleaner final result. It took some trial and error to get everything right, but in the end I think it turned out pretty well. Keep in mind I only recently started learning Fusion 360, so I'm sure there are better ways to approach this. But for now, this is the method that worked best for me. Throughout the process I went back and forth between checking measurements and entering them directly into the design. Once I was happy with the design, I brought it into my slicer software and prepared it for 3D printing. I designed the lamp so it would fit perfectly onto the print bed, as long as it's positioned correctly. The base was printed upside down because I thought it would work better for the ESP32 standoffs. Looking back though, printing it the other way around probably would have worked just as well.
After printing, I removed the parts from the printer and gave them a proper cleanup. First, I got rid of the brim that helps with bad adhesion and then I removed the supports from the base of the lamp. I used a deburring tool to smooth out any sharp edges left over on the prints. Here you can also see the standoffs I built into the base to hold the driver boards. From the first test fit everything came together nicely and the front was flush, exactly as I had planned. Now let's get some equipment ready and start soldering. I started on the electronics by preparing the power supply. First I snipped off the connector, stripped the insulation and crimped the ends. Then I got the LED strip ready by soldering on cables for power and data. Next I soldered the ESP32 microcontroller and the terminal block connector onto a prototype PCB and wired everything up. I connected the 5V and ground pins on the controller plus one wire to data bin 2 which can later be set to the correct pin in the software. Now, let's be honest, I'm definitely not an expert in soldering and my work here wasn't exactly pretty. But it worked and I promise I've gotten better since this project. Maybe I'll show you in one of my upcoming builds. Since I was planning to build two lamps, I wired up two separate controller boards. It probably could have worked with just one, but this way I can control each lamp independently. Programming the controller is actually the easiest part. Just plug it into your computer, head over to install.wled.me and hit install. If you've got multiple controllers connected, it will ask you which one you want to flash. Once that's done, type in your Wi-Fi details and boom, your lamp is officially online. From there you can drive straight into the WLED app and play around with colors, patterns and effects. This is where the magic really happens. To test it out, I quickly hooked up everything with some crocodile clamps. And success! It lit up exactly the way I hoped. Always such a satisfying moment. Now to mount the electronics I used these clever little threaded inserts. You just heat them up with a soldering iron and sink them straight into your 3D print. Then you can screw your PCB down with tiny M2 screws for a clean professional finish. Just remember to keep the soldering iron straight, don't push too far and a pair of forceps make the whole process a lot easier.
Next, I measured out how much LED strip I would actually need and used side cutters to trim them to the right length. Then I stuck it into the 3D printed lamp using the adhesive backing. Since I had a space, I placed strips not just on the back, but also along both side walls. More LEDs means a brighter lamp. Because I didn't fully trust the sticky backing, I reinforced it with some UV resin. I could have used any other adhesive, but this was a perfect chance to try out the resin. And I might even show you some future projects with it. Finally, I glued the two main parts of the lamp together using a generous amount of super glue. I made sure everything was aligned properly and pressed it into place. And of course, I did the same for the second lamp as well. I got these handy wire clips that make connecting wires super easy. I ran the wires from the power supply through the opening in one of the lamps and connected one wire to each of the clips. Then I hooked up the LED strips power and ground to the respective clips. I also added two short wires to connect to the microcontroller. This way both controller and LED strips are powered by the same source. Next, I added a long pair of wires to the clips to power the second lamp as well. Finally, I connected the power and ground from the clips along with the data from the LED strip to the PCB and screwed everything down. The PCB was secured to the standoffs inside the box with M2 screws and the clips just sit neatly next to it. I haven't printed a cover for the electronics yet, but since the lamps aren't going to be moved around much, this setup works just fine for now. 
Now I wired up the second lamp the same way as the first, using the long pair of wires coming from lamp number one. Since I'm not wiring up a third lamp, a smaller clamp was all I needed here. Let's quickly plug them in and see if everything works. And yep, looks like I didn't make any mistakes. Everything is working perfectly. The last step is gluing in the diffuser. It's just a single layer of white PLA filament at 0.2mm thickness, thin enough to let plenty of light through. Again, I used super glue to secure it and pressed it down. Nice! Even turned off, I think they look pretty cool. But let's power them on and see how the light is diffused. Wow! They turn out even better than I hoped. Now it's time to clean up my desk a bit and place the lamps where they live permanently. Well, I think this looks absolutely awesome with some indirect light behind my desk. I also wanted to show you the app. It has basically all the same settings as the website. And the coolest part, it's fully controllable via Amazon Alexa and other home automation systems. Alexa, turn on computer lights. Okay. Alexa, turn off computer lights. Okay. And if you thought it looked cool with the lights on, wait until you see how amazing it looks at night. I'm really happy with how this build turned out. If you want to make your own, I've put the links for the 3D files down in the description so you can download them for free. The total cost for the two driver boards, LED strips and the other parts I used was around 20 euros, which is way cheaper than most commercial solutions. I'll also include links to all the parts in the description if you want to grab them. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked what you saw, please consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up. It really helps the channel grow. Also, let me know in the comments if you've built one yourself or what project you think I should tackle next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time at Martin Does Side Projects.